You're watching Seatome TV. Knowledge is power. So EGFR, this is one of the first mutations ever detected in lung cancers. Uh, there's been a ton of different treatments um, and drugs. Um, it's called the uh, epidermal growth factor receptor. And it's, it's um, mutated in certain types of uh, lung cancers. Typically those, uh, it's very common in Asian populations. Um, we believe there's some association between cooking over an open wok and all of the um, gases and smoke that's produced by, by um, cooking oil, heating oils and vegetable products and so on um, to a high temperature. Uh, it has something to do with that. Um, we're not entirely sure, but we believe that's what it is. It's not often seen in uh, cancers that are, lung cancers are caused by smoking. So um, the first generation of the drugs, uh, gef gefitinib and lotinib were developed many, many years ago. They were some of the first targeted therapies ever designed. And what they do is they bind onto a piece of the gene called the tyrosine kinase domain. And basically that's its activation domain. It's a part of the gene that turns it on and off. And so uh, there's a process called ATP that binds to this TK domain, tyrosine kinase domain, and that turns it on and off. That's the mechanism. You don't really need to know that. But what's important about that is that these drugs reversibly bind to it. And so the consequence of that is over time, um, they tend to stop working. And because of that, a bunch of companies develop new drugs uh, called second generation uh, EGFR inhibitors. And these irreversibly bind. So in other words, they don't, they don't fall off the gene after they've turned it off, they stay stuck to it. Um, and so they control it much better. And those two drugs are called afatinib and dacomitinib. Um, recently, there's been a new third generation drug that's really changing lung cancer. It's called osimertinib. Um, and this actually uh, binds to, it was designed specifically for what we call a emerging mutation. So often in patients with lung cancer who, um, you know, they'll go five, six years on the first and second generation drugs, and then they'll stop responding. It's often due to this new mutation in the EGFR called the T790M. And if you recall the T at the 790th position, which is the, the name of the amino acid, uh, gets converted into an M, which is a different amino acid. I won't tell you the names of those because that's not important. Um, the first one is T and the, the second one is it, the, the one that gets converted to is M. And so when that happens, it causes the uh, structure of the EGFR protein to change. And therefore, first generation drugs such as gefitinib and, the fat, and second generation drugs can't actually find that binding pocket in the TK domain because there's a bunch of other uh, strands of, of the DNA in its way. And so therefore um, those drugs don't work, but osimertinib does. And so it was designed for that. Now, more importantly, um, it doesn't affect the uh, normal EGFR expression, which is important. And so therefore it can have less side effects and be more effective. Um, also, there's a really new drug. So we have this other change called exon 20 insertions. Exon 20 is just a component um, of the EGFR gene, it's a part of it. And you would get these uh, pieces of DNA that got inserted into it. It's a type of mutation called an insertion mutation. Uh, and so there's a new drug now, uh, mobocertinib, that is designed specifically for those type of mutations. So once again, the mechanism defines what drugs are gonna work. And importantly, you need to have a test that looks for that mechanism. Okay, so you can go to the next slide. So resistance mutations, we talked about that a bit. Um, so in, in EGFR positive breast cancers, um, so we, we went over this, the T790 mutation causes resistance. So we're gonna, the next slide we're gonna present you with is a list of, of what we now know are resistance mechanisms in EGFR targeted therapy. Thank you for watching Seatome TV. Subscribe below and stay informed.